we're going to do a graph of a piecewise function, you can see here that I have f of x equals 4 if x is less than negative 5, absolute value of x, if x is between negative 5 and negative 2, and also f of x is 2x minus 3 when x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So a few things here. First of all, you can really just plot points. Uh, for example, we're told that um, you know, f of x, same thing as y, uh, that value is equal to 4 for all values where x is less than 5. So I can go in on the y-axis and I can just plot values at 4. Uh, most of you probably know that the equation y equals 4, which is really what they're telling us to graph here, is a horizontal line. So whether or not you're plotting points and just plotting points along 4, uh, or whether or not you're graphing the line y equals 4, that's really the same thing. So this is for values of x less than negative 5. So I go up to this point right here, uh, up to 4. Notice it's not equal to, so I'm going to have a circle here at a y value of 4 and at an x value of negative 5. And for x values less than that, I'm going to have my line there. Okay, so it's a horizontal line for values less than negative 5. Uh, then for the second equation, uh, the function is the absolute value of x. Now you may know that the absolute value of x is a v-shape. I find it easier, if I have a nonlinear graph, just to plot a couple points, and I think that's a lot easier. So for example, uh, I want to know where it goes at 5, at negative 5, because uh, x can be equal to negative 5. So the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So I go up to 5 when x is negative 5 and I make a solid dot there. Uh, when x is negative 4, y is positive 4, so I can make a point there. Uh, when x is negative 3, y is going to be 3, and this is going to go all the way up to negative 2, but at negative 2 it can't be equal to it, it's got to be less than that. So uh, if I put negative 2 into the absolute value function, I'm going to get positive 2, but that's got to be an open circle, and so I'm going to draw the line through like this, okay? And again, there are other ways to do it. You, you may know that the absolute value function looks like a V cutting through the origin, and you could just plot the part of it that's between x values of negative 5 and negative 2. I'm not saying that you have to plot all the points every time, but I think this is an effective way to do it if you have trouble. Um, okay, starting when x is equal to negative 2, this is my function. Uh, 2 times negative 2 minus 3 is negative 7, so that's going to come down here at negative 7, and it can be equal to that value at 2, so we're starting out at negative 7. And um, you can plot more points. Notice that the slope is just 2 there. Uh, so I could also just kind of continue that slope, go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and basically have a line that looks like this. Remember that it can equal an x value of negative 2. So I have a closed circle there, a filled in circle, and the graph is going to look something kind of like this. So there should be your answer at the end of the problem. Now, you can also do this on a graphing calculator. And I'll take out a little time to, to show you what that's going to look like. Uh, to put a piecewise function into your graphing calculator, uh, you're really best off if you put the equation in parentheses when you do this. Um, so I don't really need to put the number 4 in parentheses for y equals 4, but that's my original value. Um, the inequality has to go in parentheses, so you type parentheses afterwards. And if you go to second and then the test button, which is above the math button, second test, you get a list of greater than, less than symbols, that kind of thing. Uh, of course, in this case, I want a less than symbol, which is option number 5. Oops, sorry, I need to do x is less than negative 5. And you'll see here that uh, if I go graph this, you can see just that horizontal line part. Now, the next part uh, with the absolute value function, for example, uh, one thing that changes a little bit, and this is something you, you have to think about, is notice that the x value there is between two values. You actually set up two separate inequalities. x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 5, 
and x is going to be less than negative 2. So you actually do two sets of things in parentheses. Uh, the way this is going to look, and by the way, if you've never graphed an absolute value on a graphing calculator, uh, we can go back to the y equals button here and go down to option 2. Um, absolute value function is in the math menu, and if you look under the number category, ABS is the first choice there, so you get all kinds of different things. Uh, actually, int down there, number 5, is the greatest integer function if you ever wanted to graph that. Uh, so I want the absolute value of x, okay, and then I want this for two values. I want it when x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So I'll type in my negative 5, and I'm going to go to test, and I've got the less than or equal sign there. And then I need a second bound. So you notice I closed out my parentheses there, and then I'm going to create new parentheses. Um, I want x to be less than negative 2. And again, if you graph this, you can now see the new part of the graph popping up here. Okay, uh, the final step here, I haven't showed this in either step because it wasn't necessary, but it's actually really important. Um, if you have a sum or a difference in your absolute value, um, I'm sorry, in your piecewise function, uh, you do need to make sure you put that sum or difference in parentheses, or it may not apply the, um, the domain values to the whole expression. So for 2x minus 3, I need that whole 2x minus 3 inside parentheses. Then I can do my requirement for the x value. x has to be greater than or equal to... Oh, wait, I need tests. Uh, x is going to be greater than or equal to... This, this needs to go to my equation. Uh, let's see, x here needs to be greater than or equal to so test greater than or equal to negative 2. And then when we graph this, you're going to see the final piece of the graph come up. Of course, looks like the one I had originally. So it's going to go on infinitely, of course. Um, so that's the basic idea. So no particular reason to use a graphing calculator, but if you needed to, that's how you could use it.